Hello everyone and welcome to not one but two really nice games uh, from the Chessable Masters finals. Uh, it is Magnus Carlsen versus Denis Lazovic uh, and uh, well, well Denis uh, might not be uh, you know uh, amongst the the elite uh, in classical chess. I believe he's 2563 in classical chess. Uh, when it comes to speed chess, rapid blitz, bullet, he uh, can definitely play with the best of them. Last year he defeated Sam Sevian and he uh, won the uh, division two of the uh, of the champions chess tour and now that he qualified for division one where he faces the the elite players and uh yeah you'll ju you'll see how how strong he is as um yeah, he lost the game one to magnus then game two ended in a draw uh this is game three and we are also going to check out uh game four now sometimes i don't like showing more than one game in one video sometimes if it's a shorter game or a shorter time for me then i will do it here i decided to do so but uh, you know you can also just check out one of them you don't have to watch both of them uh but i suggest you do as usual so let's check it out magnus has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to c4 so uh dennis uh, he is down a point uh, and he would very much like to bounce back in the match, uh, but, you know, it's going to be hard with the black pieces against Magnus. So knight to f6, knight to c3, e5, we have knight to f3, and as usual, the four knights of the English. Uh, knight to c6, g3, we have pawn to d5, striking in the center, captures, captures. Uh, and the uh, bishop to g2, Finketoing the light square bishop, bishop to c5, and both players castle. So castles, castles, d3, uh, and pawn to h6. We have knight captures on d5, queen captures, and now bishop to d2. Uh, preparing to maybe shift the bishop over to c3, uh, and put more pressure on that e5 pawn. So rook to d8, uh, and queen to c2. We have queen back to d6, now you don't want your queen, uh, well, in, in front of that bishop for, for the Entire game a3 preparing pawn to b4 and of course a5 stopping that we have rook a to c1 putting pressure on the bishop and then it goes back bishop to b6 and now also the knight will be able to move as the c7 pawn is nicely defended so bishop to e3 uh, and bishop to e6 and uh, interestingly there is a game that reached this exact same position and believe it or not Denis Lazovic had it with the black pieces against Parham Maksulu in the world blitz championship of 2023 now it's hard to say if Magnus actually knew this or you know of course he did prepare to uh, to play against Dennis before the game but uh, you know uh, remembering a blitz game from uh, from three years ago uh, I, I know Magnus knows a lot but it would be it would be weird to think that um, you know he actually knew that this game was played but in that game uh, Maxulu continued with queen to a4 and queen to a4 is one of the top engine moves the other top engine moves are uh, bishop captures on b6 and also knight to d2 and magnus goes for bishop captures on b6 the other uh, top engine move and it is now as of move 15 that we have a completely new game so and the, the, that one against parham Oxulu ended in, in the draw if you guys are interested so uh here c captures on b6 and now queen to a4 and bishop to d5 so they uh retranspose into the game uh Lazic played against parham and in that game rook f to d1 was played but now we have pawn to e3 by Magnus and it is now as of move 17 that we really have a completely new game so this time for real and interestingly in the the game uh against the Parham, Parham left his pawn on e2 for the rest of the game he never he never advanced at the e3 or to e4 uh, but okay rook 8 to c8 and now rook to c3 Magnus wants to double up on the c file Parham also uh went, went for this idea knight to e7 and now rook f to c1 uh, we have a trade on c3 rook captures rook captures and bishop to c6 so okay uh, dennis has the um, uh, doubled pawns on the b file but he wants to kick away magnus's queen and then play b5 and b4 so queen back to d1 and now pawn to b5 uh, we have queen to e1 uh, and now pawn to b4 a captures and now not a captures on b4 but knight to d5 attacking the rook and the pawn so the idea is when magnus moves the rook he will recapture on b4 with the knight but magnus says nope i already grabbed one pawn i will take another and he plays rook captures on c6 here magnus sacrifices a pawn uh sorry the exchange b captures and now uh undoubles his pawns uh while uh, enjoying uh, his two extra pawns now and he does have the past a pawn so if he can put a queen behind the pawn he already has a bishop on this diagonal guarding the queening square could be could be very nice but Dennis replies with the strongest move c5 uh this prevents Magnus from advancing the pawn to d4 which uh, sort of cements the weakness on d3 and he will now go after it with knight to b4 and uh, there, there's really no good way for Magnus to defend it or rather there is 
uh, but you have to play a6 and give up the a6 pawn. The idea is that after a6, queen captures, you will capture the knight on, uh, the, the pawn on e5, and after knight before going after the pawn, bishop to f1 nicely holds. Uh, so that's the idea. But after c5, knight to d2 was played by Magnus. He wants to go after the pawn this way, but now it's a little bit different. Knight to b4, knight to c4, and now queen captures on d3. This is a... Uh, this is a spectacular move by Dennis, as knight captures on e5 would be uh, punished severely. If if Magnus went for knight captures on e5, uh, do you see what the punishment was? Uh, even feel free to pause the video and try to spot this idea, even though it wasn't played in the game, it's really, really nice. So, wh while I give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were uh, able to do this, congratulations on being a uh, great punisher of bad moves. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen to c2. The threat being rook to d1 to win the white queen. And once you prevent that with bishop to f3, now comes f6. And where can the knight go? Does, doesn't matter. Uh, also, the queen covers g6, so you can't go there. But if you go knight to g4, then look at this. Knight to d3 attacks the queen, also puts pressure on the f2 pawn. The only way to defend is queen to f1, uh, and now just uh, f5, and uh, the, the knight is lost. There, there is no squares um, left for this knight, and you just win a piece. So that's why after this queen captures on d3 move, knight captures on e5 is impossible. Magnus figures this out, plays queen, uh, bishop to f1, and uh, he didn't take a lot. He spent some 30 seconds, but he decided, okay, the, the, we cannot play that. Queen back to d5, and now queen to a1. So, okay, he gave up a pawn, but the knight is defended. The queen is ready to escort the pawn up the board. Uh, Dennis plays knight to d3. And now the bishop no longer defends the knight, and he just wants to win a piece here. So, Magnus has to defend, pawn to b3, and now queen to f3, going after the f2 pawn. Magnus defends, queen to a2, and now look at this, knight to c1. Beautiful move by Dennis, now attacking the queen. And uh, where do you where do you move the queen? The problem is, let's say you play queen to c2, uh, all of a sudden rook to d1 comes and you resign. There is no way to defend this because uh, what do you play? You play a6, uh, rook captures on f1 is the idea. And after king captures, queen to h1 will be checkmate as the knight covers the e2 square. So Magnus, of course, figures this out. He plays knight captures on e5, attacks uh, Dennis's queen on f3, uh, and now queen to e4. Of course, he doesn't have to trade queens. He will just attack the knight while the queen is hanging. And now there's no good way for Magnus to save his knight. If he tries something like, uh, well, what can he try? Queen to b2 to defend the knight. Again, rook d1 with the exact same idea of just sacrificing the rook and then queen h1 checkmate. You can play some f3, but then queen captures an e3 with check and you, you just fall apart. So instead, after queen e4, queen to a4, Magnus now has to part with his knight and queen captures an e5. Pawn to a6, but okay, Magnus still has the passed a pawn. Uh, queen to d5, and now pawn to a7. So uh, basically, uh, Magnus is not uh, down, down a knight, he's down a full rook, uh, as uh, there was an exchange sacrifice before Magnus now uh, sort of uh, had to give back the piece. And now rook to a8, uh, st stopping the advancement of the passed pawn. And okay, for the moment, as long as Magnus has the passed pawn on a7, Dennis's rook is out of the game. But if Dennis is able to somehow move the queen, take the rook, take the pawn, uh, he will just be up a full rook. So, okay, we have queen to b5, now preparing queen to b8, uh, queen to d8, stopping that. We have queen to b7, uh, now putting pressure on, on the f7 pawn, bishop to c4 is coming, uh, knight captures on b3. We have bishop to c4, and now knight to d2, attacking the bishop and inviting bishop captures on f7. And uh, here, best would be to play bishop to d5, but... Um, uh, it's already it's already very hard to play. Magnus has some 30 seconds on the clock. Dennis has 12 seconds on the clock. And uh, finding a move like bishop to d5 uh, is, you know, asking a bit much. The the point is that after bishop to d5, rook captures on a7. Uh, you, you don't capture and then queen captures on d5. Now you play bishop captures on f7 check and you take the rook while defending your bishop. Uh, but after the immediate bishop captures on f7, Dennis just moved the king. And now you can't really do all that much. Uh, uh, there is no uh, there there's no such uh, such trickery left, and you don't really have a move. If bishop to d5 now, now rook captures on a7 is a move. You capture it, and then queen captures bishop, and you're just down a down a full knight. So instead, after king to h8, king to g2 was played. 
sort of trying to improve the position a little bit, but now pawn to c4. The pawn marches forward. Uh, we have bishop to g6, uh, trying to create some sort of a mating net. Maybe you move the bishop, maybe you get the queen into the game somehow. Uh, but yeah, if not, uh, that means Dennis will just pick up the pawn and uh, will just be up in material. But also the passed pawn is marching forward. c3, uh, bishop to c2, and now queen to c8, forcing Magnus's queen to move back. Queen to f7, and now queen to c6 with check. We have pawn to e4, uh, and now queen to b6. You could also uh, capture on e4, I mean, for example, queen captures and then, uh, knight captures and then queen to f3, uh, but uh, it, it's maybe giving uh, up a little bit too much. But still, after rook captures on a7, you will be able to capture on e4, but then rook to f7, and again, black is winning. But uh, both of them are constantly below the the, the 10 second mark and uh, uh well you, you just can't afford to calculate this much so queen to b6 was played now pawn to e5 magnus starts advancing his passed pawn uh and queen captures on a7 it would be it would be a grave mistake to play rook captures on a7 because by playing e5 magnus also opened up uh, this diagonal so i hope none of you forgot about our good friend the bishop uh, on c2 so instead after e5 just queen captures on a7 dennis eliminates the pawn and now queen to f5 magnus threatens checkmate and dennis plays king to g8 so all of a sudden magnus uh, starts a king hunt queen to h7 with check king to f7 queen to g6 with check king to f8 and now pawn to e6 now you have to guard the f7 square at all times otherwise you're getting checkmated queen to b7 check king to h3 and now queen to e7 we have queen to f5 with check and queen to f6 queen to d5 going after the rook and now rook to e8 so defending everything and getting ready to uh claim the d6 pawn and once that is claimed then magnus will just be down a full rook so bishop to f5 stopping the uh, capture of the pawn uh king to g8 he does uh, now escape with the king and there's no more uh tricks that magnus can use to even prolong the game he does go for e7 with check but now king to h8 queen to d7 going after the rook and just queen captures on e7 uh, this was one last trick if rook captures on e7 then okay queen to c8 and you will checkmate the black king but of course dennis will not fall for that he played queen captures on e7 and he was in this position on move 55 that magnus carlson resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more uh, to be done here so dennis equalized the match and now there is one more game to be played and dennis has the white pieces so it's a good uh you know, maybe psychological edge, you just defeated Magnus Carlsen with the black pieces, and now you have uh, the, the white pieces in the final game, uh, so of course uh, he will do his best to, to win this, and I will show you this one as well, uh, because it's a very, very tricky game, so let's uh, shift the, the colors, now Dennis with the white pieces opens with pawn to d4, we have pawn to d5 by Magnus, c4, c6, and knight to f3, we have knight to f6, e3, and bishop to g4, uh, the, the color system, uh, we have h three bishop captures queen captures and now pawn to e6 so uh we usually say that in these queen pawn openings uh black slide square bishop is the most problematic piece to develop so magnus just gives it up and says i no longer have a problem piece i put my pawns in light squares i have a bishop to you know just go uh, in between those uh, pawns and light squares and i will have a, have a very nice game so okay knight to c3 we have knight b to d7 bishop to d3 and bishop to b4 all been played before nothing new here both players castle and now rook to d1 we have rook to e8 uh, and queen back to e2 we have queen to e7 both players um, are developing the queen magnus also uh, nicely connects his rooks uh, bishop to d2 and now d captures on c4 we have bishop captures and now uh, there is a game where knight to b6 was played but here we have bishop back to d6 and it is now as of move 13 that we have a completely new game and both of them equal time uh, nine minutes uh, both um, so they just you know blitz the, this out without any issues and we have pawn to e4 by dennis he wants to win a piece with pawn to e5 so magnus plays pawn to e5 himself and now pawn to d5 now the uh you you did the grab more space but you weaken the c5 square so magnus puts the bishop on c5 and puts uh, pressure on this diagonal now well you could play something like rook 8 to c1 and it would make sense you develop a piece you're you know x-raying that bishop uh bishop to e3 first so okay magnus trades bishop captures queen 
queen captures and he immediately offers a queen trade. Uh, but while you could capture this, then it goes back queen to e2. It's not uncommon for, for players to um, just trust Magnus when he offers a, a, a queen trade. Uh, knight to b6, we have bishop to b3, and now c captures on d5. Knight captures on d5, we have knight capture, sorry, knight b captures on d5, bishop captures on d5, uh, and queen to e7. Uh, you, you have to guard the pawn somehow, and you also know rook a to c1 is coming, so it makes sense to move the queen. Queen e7, rook a to c1, and now rook a to c8. We have bishop back to b3, and just rook e to d8. And if you look at this position now, it's pretty symmetrical, pretty equal. Uh, Dennis does have a bishop against the knight. Okay, it's play on both sides of the board, so maybe you will have some sort of an edge if you uh, trade both the rooks and the queen, but objectively it should be should be very equal. Rook captures on c8 was played, rook captures, g3 and g6. We have pawn to a3 and king to g7. Uh, king to g2, now pawn to b6, both players improving their position as much as possible, and queen to f3 now. Maybe if everything moves, then you will have some pressure against that f7 pawn, but rook to d8, and now rook to d3. Magnus does trade, rook captures, queen captures, and now just queen to c5. Uh, asking, uh, what do you do here? I'm putting some pressure on your king side. I'm also maybe preparing queen to c1. Uh, so what do you play here? Well, uh, bishop to c4. Dennis cannot offer a queen trade as the queen is for the moment stuck guarding the e4 pawn. So he plays bishop to c4. He stops Magnus infiltrating with his queen and now Magnus grabs more space. Pawn to a5, stopping pawn to b4, uh, king to f3. Bringing the king closer to the action, also defending the e4 pawn. And now the white queen can move. So queen back to c8 going after the h3 pawn and then it goes back king to g2 we have queen to c6 and then it repeats king to f3 but now magnus does not repeat he wants to continue the game pawn to h5 okay we have bishop to b3 uh and now uh how do you how do you continue this well you could play something like pawn to h4 maybe try to weaken the king side but magnus goes pawn to b5 we have bishop back to d5 and now queen to d7 uh Taking the, the bishop doesn't really do all that much, plus you give uh, Dennis a passed pawn, so maybe, you know, if you don't have to do this, maybe try something else. Magnus repeats once, queen to d7, goes after the h3 pawn, and king back to g2. And now king to f8, Magnus starts bringing the king into the game. We have pawn to b4, uh, and pawn to a4. And now, if you look at the queen side... Uh, Dennis does not have does have a light square bishop, and Magnus put uh, both of his pawns on light squares. So maybe somehow, if you're able to move the queen and let's say get the bishop, uh, let's say to e2 to put pressure on the b5 pawn, and maybe also join in with the queen, maybe it could be a weakness. But the problem is, as soon as Dennis starts planning something like this, uh, Magnus will say, "Okay, we're just not going to allow that. We'll just play knight captures on d5." So well, it is. Uh, could be dangerous, uh, you know, realistically, there's uh, very little chance that it will happen. Uh, so the question is whether Dennis is ready to call it a day or does he want to play for more? If you want to call it a day, you play h4 and then it's basically up to Magnus whether he will capture on d5 or not. But without capturing on d5, there's very little you can do to actually you know, prolong the game. Uh, but after a4, Dennis played pawn to f4. He wants to, he, he wants to play this for a win, and he wants to com complicate matters. And okay, e captures, g captures, and now queen to c7. Now, the situation on the clock is also very relevant here. Magnus has four minutes, and Dennis two minutes and 20 seconds, and he has to decide whether he wants to defend the pawn, whether he wants to stop queen to c1, uh, what does he want to do here? Uh, now, if you, the, the idea, let's say if you play king to f3, is that queen to c1 is just really annoying and it's really really hard, hard to play this like you play e5 queen to h1 check and already you blunder a piece and uh after queen to c7 you you could play e5 right away uh, which is definitely the way to go let's say you trade everything captures captures now you allow the black queen down the board and now you cannot play g3 because just uh queen to b3 uh, uh, gives a check and also connects with the, the, wi the white queen and if you trade then this pawn becomes a fast pawn and it easily promotes so you will have to play king to f3 and now after this check you will have to defend your queen with the king and now you allow queen captures on h3 but then queen captures on b5 and okay the game continues but uh, again with perfect play should be a draw 
So after queen to c7, uh, queen to d2 was played. Again, Dennis uh, sort of trusts Magnus. He, he he defends the f4 pawn and stops the infiltration with the queen. And now we have king to e7. Here, queen to d6 was very strong, but to, to a little time on the clock to uh, figure, uh, figure out why and also to maybe allow pawn to e5. Uh, but it was a uh, very strong point is that uh, after you do this, so let's say king f3, now you play queen to d7, and you're either winning this pawn, or if the king defends it, then you will capture on e4 and win this pawn as, uh, well, the bishop is pinned. So that's the idea. But after queen d2, Magnus started bringing his king into the game, king e7, and now pawn to e5. Definitely the best move. Knight captures, queen captures, and queen to d7. Again, offering a queen trade, and while it is best to accept this, Dennis uh, uh, again trusts Magnus queen to c5 with check or maybe he doesn't trust him maybe he just figures that this is more tricky and he will also try to uh, to beat Magnus the problem is he's down to 20 seconds on the clock and Magnus has two and a half minutes so king to e6 we have king to g3 now queen to d3 uh, with check uh, and here we have king to h4 and the position is now completely winning for Magnus but uh, this move is extremely hard to find I will even ask you to pause the video here and try to spot this winning idea for Magnus while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being a true master of the end game. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to g5 with check. That's the key. And the reason is that uh, if you capture with the pawn, you allow this check and you cannot allow a queen trade. Uh, because uh, your pawns will just be unstoppable. To give you an example, even king captures on h5, you just trade queens, and now you have to eliminate the e5 pawn first. If you if you just start pushing, then uh, having three pawns that white can push will be a problem for black. But if you capture one pawn, then it's not a problem. For example, captures, captures, and now b4 will be winning. Captures a3, and your pawn is just becoming a queen much, much sooner than uh, white's pawns. And another thing after this, uh, well, after king h4 if you play pawn to g5 check is that if you capture with the king doesn't matter if you capture the g pawn or the h pawn uh your queen to g3 check or a queen captures on h3 if you capture the, the the other pawn and after king captures you will capture here and after king g5 queen f5 check and after king to h4 or you go up the board and then you just get checkmated uh, then you collect the f4 pawn with check and after king h3 queen f3 check and after king to h4 queen e4 check and you will uh, either force a queen trade or you will win the e5 pawn for example king h3 queen to d3 check king to h2 and now queen to d5 either forces a queen trade or you will uh, so, uh, you know just give a check uh, give up the pawn now black is up a pawn and of course everyone knows that in a queen and pawn endgame up a pawn means uh, a winning endgame so that's the idea behind um, uh, the pawn to g5 but magnus missed it he played king to f5 and now he allows a draw pawn to e6 with check King captures on e6 and queen to e5 with check. We have king to d7, uh, king to g5. We have queen captures on h3 and now queen captures on b5 with check. King e7, queen to c5 with check. King to e8 and queen to e5 with check. We have queen back to e6. Magnus is up a pawn, so of course he wants to trade queens, but just queen to b8 with check. King to e7, queen to c7 with check, and now king to f8. And here, again, a problematic position because there is only one move that doesn't lose for Dennis, uh, and Dennis doesn't find it. And, I mean, you, you can't uh, really uh, be, you know... Uh, confused by that uh, he he did play most of his uh, la last like 20 moves with five seconds on the clock uh, here king h6 is the only move that uh, allows you to draw point is that after king h6 doesn't really much uh, doesn't matter what you play if you play pawn to g5 check uh, then you can just capture on h5 and after let's say queen to g6 check you will move the king king to g4 and now if captures captures this is enough for a draw and uh, if um, you just prepare with queen to f6 now okay g5 will be uh, preparation for checkmate uh, now you just start checking the black king queen to c8 checking to e7 queen to c7 with checking to f8 queen to c8 with check and so on and so on will be a draw by uh, threefold repetition but in the game queen to e5 was played and now the position is just winning for magnus queen captures on e5 but <laughs> magnus doesn't find it the winning idea here f6 check is actually winning for magnus uh, but uh, magnus also down to 10 seconds doesn't find it point is that after queen captures you trade queens you play h4 the pawn 
pawn is just unstoppable. There's no way to catch uh, to, to catch the pawn. Uh, but after king queen to e5, queen captures an e5. Was played. Magnus goes for a queen trade. King to e7, and now uh, you have to play pawn to b5. This is the way to continue the game. Force the black king to move and then infiltrate with king to f6. But then it's played king to f4. Uh, and this just gives Magnus the e6 square, and now it's just not the same. King to e6, and now king to e4. And the problem is b5 it doesn't really do anything, uh, as you have pawn to h4, and then if you advance at king to d7, you will be able to stop both of the pawns, and uh, yeah, just uh, doesn't doesn't work. We have king to e4, pawn to g5 now by Magnus, and now the two connected pass pawns are just too strong to... Uh, to face king to d4 we have pawn to h4 king to e4 now uh, pawn to h3 king to f3 and here king captures on e5 and he was in this position on move 61 that Denis Lazovic resigned the game and with it uh, the, the 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 match so Magnus Carlsen wins the finals of the Chessville Masters 2024 but it doesn't matter as we still have the uh, you know finals of the losers bracket and then they go into the grand final and then Magnus will face someone who will face Denis Lazovic in the grand final uh, here I can even show it to you. Uh, there you have it. This is the official one. Uh, so Magnus defeated Lazovic. He's in the grand final. And uh, Lazovic is in the loser's final now waiting for the uh, winner of the semifinal match between uh, uh, Yanni Pomnici and Alireza Firuja. So Dennis will face uh, one of them. And then whoever wins will face Magnus in the grand final. So we might see uh, Magnus versus uh, Lazovic, Magnus versus Alireza Firuja or Magnus versus Yanni Pomnici. Whoever yeah, emerges victorious. And uh, for those of you who are maybe new to chess, I can also show you why this is winning as well. Uh, once you attack the pawn, uh, just g4, uh, you cannot uh, capture on g4 because then the h pawn cannot be stopped. And uh, if b5, you just play pawn to f5. Now, th there's no move white can make. For example, you play b6, king to d6, you go after the pawn, king h2, you just march the pawns forward, king to g1, g3, doesn't really matter, b7, you will stop the pawn. And after king to h1, just f3. For example, king g1, h2, checking f1, and h2, uh, bringing a queen. Or even, you know, if you want to be awesome, you can bring a rook into the game and it will also be checkmate. Uh, so yeah, uh, very nicely done by, by Dennis. And uh, you can see how uh, a lot of these young players still don't have their classical rating to 26, 2650, 2700. But uh, in Rapid and Blitz chess, uh, they can they can definitely uh, f fight the, the strongest chess players. As you can see, even uh, Dennis here is almost 2800 in, in online Rapid. Uh, so yeah, you never know how, how strong these uh, young players are. He's only 17 years old. And I mean... He took down Magnus with the black pieces. That's uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Very nicely done by both of them. But Mag Magnus takes the win in, in the match. Uh, I would like to thank Gerhard Henkelmann, Jeremy Antipos, Carl uh, Weinberg, uh, Rajashri Chaudhuri, and uh, David Gasparian for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.